One, two, three. Quaker. Quaker. Oh. Now we're going to QALC with the snow. I don't want to go inside. <laughs> If I were to describe the conference, it's basically just a bunch of young adults trying to solve global issues through the values that Quakerism teaches. Kids from a lot of the Quaker schools in the United States come together and discuss like many topics in a progressive school and how to apply my Quaker values at home and at school. And everything. Once we got to Penn Station, Marla taught us how to play this game called Foursquare, and that's when the bonding started. Attention, please. Wait, what school do you go to? School I go to? Yeah. I go to Brooklyn Friends School. <laughs> and, and you, Joe? I go to Mrs. Brown School. Wow. How'd you meet? Just, just now, yeah, on the train. Now. Yeah, but why? Is it like some kind of coincidence? Mm -hmm. It's wild. We're just, we just found each other. <laughs> Right. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, Are you with somebody from? Yes, I'm with Ursula. And Ursula happens to go to a Quaker school as well. Yes, mm -hmm. I also go to Moses. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wild. But just tell me. Cool. Yeah. You, you are both on the same train, and you happen to go to Quaker schools, and you wind up sitting next to each other. It must be. Fake. I mean, that's that's crazy. Yeah. That's <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Well, how did that? And wait, wait, no, you must be doing something. Yeah. What are you doing? We're going to the Great Youth After a nutritious breakfast, we got in a lift and were on our way to the American Friends Service Committee where we were meeting up with other friend schools from around the country to discuss important issues. But first, we had to have a talk with our president. Our conscience is what matters. We're not meant to be victim of our own law. That's crazy! I was kind of thinking about like, I wonder if anybody's actually hearing this, um, like within the administration. When I was watching this guy speak, I got this really, just this realization that like, we're really living in a historical moment. It made me realize sort of how close to the source that we are. rights here in D.C. because D.C. became the first human rights city in the United States in 2008, and we actually led the organizing around that. Um, so one of the things we do around organizing around human rights is we when we first arrived at the campus uh, Sidwell Friends, I was amazed by how large it was, like, considering we go to, like, such a small school, but it was amazing to see it was, like, all in the shape of an O and it was like really easy to get to everything even though it was really a big building. One of the main aspects of the building that I really liked was the meeting house and how it was the sound there was really good and whenever anybody would share you could really hear them and you could hear like this resonance of what they were saying. Leadership is taking initiative in relationships so I hope that you will build some new relationships here and then they will stay with you beyond the conference. What was your favorite part? My favorite part? Mm. My favorite part was when we went to get Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> That's my favorite part. So Nash, what, what was it like sleeping on the ground at Sidwell, like in the gym? You know, it wasn't great said. I didn't sleep too well, but I, it was kind of nice. I felt like I was in like one big sleepover. The museum. Museum about the news. That's why they call it the Newseum. Yeah. 
Yeah. I thought it was new, then Zium, but it's actually like new Zium. And there's no Z in it. We're here at the museum to hear from a panel of journalists, plus learn about lobbying from the Friends Council on national legislation. And so I did that, and a local news reporter visited our school, and I gave a speech, and she's just like, you should do broadcast journalism. She's like, you have a great voice, you have a great look, you should really do this. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be on TV. So um, she's like, no, the, you know, the sky's the limit in this field. And I just started putting stories together, and she kind of mentored me and helped me get my first internship, and then I was sold, and I was just like, I want to change the world using television, and I want to see people that look like me, more people that look like me in that field, so I wanted to lead the charge and do that, so that's kind of how I got started. Relative to all the other groups, we were so antisocial. We would just stay within our school, but I felt like it had value, you know? Like, I bonded with these people from my school that I don't really talk that much in, like, usual school days. I really like the talent show this year. Everyone was really synchronized, like as a joke. Nicole put up her flashlight, then I put up my flashlight when someone was singing a song, we were waving it, and then pretty soon the whole room was doing it. And it was like really funny, and I just felt really, I guess, united with it. stand-up comedian which I thought was really cool because it takes a lot of courage to get up there and like some of the voices of the people that like that performed was, was incredible. So practically Peter Kavinsky which is the white male lead he's watching a movie with Lara Jean who's half Korean half white in the movie and so they're watching 16. Oh no I really liked the student-led workshops. Um, especially one about conversation and about how to, like, how people come into conversations and what people gain from conversations. Information about, like, sex and, like, contraceptives and safe ways to do it, then we will, like, try to... Those kids, a lot of them are my personal heroes. The ones who went out there and fought for what they believed in. Okay, so now that the conference is done, what... What do you guys think? Like, what did you like? What did you not like? Oh my god, I met so many cool people. I ended up bonding with the BFS kids and a bunch of new friends from different schools. Last year I made a lot of friends and I was able to maintain like a close relationship with a few of them. And this year I made far more friends than I did last year. I really hope that I'm able to keep up those relations because the people I met were really cool and were interested in a lot of the same things. It's really nice to have friends outside of New York City because even sometimes when you go to a private school in the city, it's like you sort of know everyone, whether it's from Deus or other things like that. So it's really nice to have people outside of the state. I think the last Quaker meeting, I was just kind of reflecting on how fast the whole the whole conference went and kind of, I don't know, I just felt like I was just like sitting down there like at Sidwell when we first arrived. I just felt like that was like just a couple days ago and it was, but like, I don't know, there's so much that happened within those couple days and so many people that we met. Well, I thought it was eye-opening because I got to meet a lot of new people and like the Quaker meetings were really nice because usually people don't really stand up to speak at Quaker meeting, but like a lot of people stood up and they shared their experience and I met a lot of new people too, so it was great. Oh yes, I'm actually really happy this year that I went to QILC and generally it just had that iconic, like just safe environment that happens every year at QILC. I definitely found myself reflecting on um, how I am in the BFS community versus like how I was at QILC, trying to absorb what everyone was saying, um, take that with me into the rest of my life. That's a wrap for QILC 2019. This is said, reporting for the life, and remember to let your life speak.